So let's see the oil pressure. I put a new fitting of ferrule on the back of this thing, so let's see what it does now. So, like I said, it was at 70, so that's pretty good. All the rockers were getting oil. Number two, I had some issues with here. And I just had to take everything out, clean everything up, and you can see the oil right now coming out of it. And they all had oil coming out of them, so I'm good to go. All right, guys, here we go. We've got everything done. You, you see the video where I had some issues with the oil and number two, exhaust. I cleaned everything up. It's fine now, I don't know. One of the things I did think was beneficial was when I was priming it, was to turn it over, get that oil moving through everything. But I cleaned everything out to make sure it was okay. I even talked to Brent Likens who built the engine and he suggested a couple things, but it's fine now. You'll see in the video, you'll see where I added some clips where you can see the oil coming through the 80 thousandths hole for the lifter bushing. It's pretty cool, I've never seen that before. So now we're gonna put the intake on. Everything's clean, I'm ready to button it up. So that's our plan. So on the intake gasket, the only thing I use on the end rails is, is silicone. I don't use these gaskets here. I showed you that before, never used them. I don't put a valley pan in it and I don't put any sealer on the intake itself either. So I always like to fit the intake first to see the space between the intake manifold and the china rail and end rail. So I kind of know how much silicone to use. run like one single bead, try to make it thick enough. And I like to put a little extra dab right in the corners of the intake. And I measured it actually, it's like 250 thousandths is, is what it is. Getting down to the wire on this one. I look at it, it looks pretty good to me. And I say, put it on there, baby. I got all the bolts already set up. So when I put it on there, I can just put it on with the bolts, not have to worry about hunting around for them. So I taped it up too, so I don't take a chance of dropping something in there. I like to take a peek and look at it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Get the bolts in. I'm pretty pumped about this. So I got the intake on. You didn't need to see me torque all the bolts. I'll just kind of go around it again because it's been sitting for a little bit. And I don't torque them anyways, man. I just snug them up. That's it. Hopefully this thing makes good power, picks up some horsepower, and 
then I can take this intake off and maybe test a couple other intakes. We're going to see how that goes. And I'd like to finish up with a tunnel ram. That's my goal. Be pretty cool. So we'll see how this all comes about. And then I got all the matching hardware, grade eight stuff. I like that gold. I don't know if it's cadmium or whatever, but I like that color. It looks good. So when you bring it down, you can get a better look. So there it is, all ready to rock and roll pretty much for the Muddy Mount engine run stand. Dying to see how this thing does on the dyno. So maybe we'll pick up some horsepower. It's an old looking intake. It's nothing shiny, but it looks good. It's sealed well. I'm gonna check the port alignment and make sure that all looks good without any issues. And next step really is get the distributor back in, valve covers on, and rock and roll. All right, guys, here's the finished product. I did a lot of work that you didn't see. I didn't think you really cared about it, but I ended up putting on the crank trigger distributor just because I like the way it looks. I've had it for years. I've never used it. I said I better figure out how to use it. So you can see I installed that. In order for that to work with a Cleveland thermostat, it wouldn't work. You can see how close it is right here. So I, what I get, did was I got a 460 thermostat housing, and inside that is the original Cleveland thermostat that I won from actually Brett Likens from guessing a horsepower contest on one of these. It's got the traditional Moroso gold valve covers. You've seen them before. I don't know if you've ever seen these before, though, these type of breather setup. That's what came with these. There, I cleaned them up. I said, I'll, I'll reuse them for now and see how they work. Another addition is these valve cover bolts here that I got an NOS package from Daniel Wilson who sent it to me. So I said, hey, I'm going to use them. I had these over here. But they didn't line up well. I don't know if the valve covers were bent. I messed around with it for a while. I said, I'm done messing around with it. Try them on something else. But I think it's overall, it looks pretty nasty. We'll see how she works. With those headers that I have, those JR headers, it's not going to work on that engine stand that I have from Mighty Mount. So I'll just use a cherry picker and hold up the front of it. Maybe put a support brace under the oil pan, something. But I just want to get it fired up and hear what it sounds like since it hasn't run in eight years. I'm using the same plug wires that were on it for eight years ago, so we'll see how those work out. Now let me get a close-up of this gem. This is the APD 1050 Billet Enforcer. John Kyle hooked me up with this. Thank you, John, very much. This is a serious piece right here. So when Brent had dyno this before, he said he used a Holley 1050 Dominator, maybe had some work to it. So this will be a good comparison. But I make videos for them. They hooked me up with it, said try it and see how it works. I said, I got to do it, man. And then I got a 4150 on order, so to speak. We're going to try that on the Cougar and may even put it on this. I don't know how it's going to all come back. I got the Moroso electric water pump here. I've never used one of these. I've always used like a Mazir water pump. It's got the tough stuff. 100 amp single wire alternator. The only thing I'm missing is the bracket for this adjustment, which I don't think I'm going to matter on the engine run stand. And I don't need an alternator anyways. But here's the crank trigger setup. John Kyle got me this also. Sponsored me with this. This is the Innovators West. So that bolts right up. And I'm able to use the stock timing pointer. So I said I'll put it on there and see how it works. And it's one of those deals. If you've never used one before, it's probably got a little bit of a learning curve. But we'll figure all that out. But you know this thing's going to be pretty nasty. That's for sure. What I'll put here at the end are the cam specs for this because some guys wanted to know that. I may even make just a short video on it because a ton of guys were asking me about it. It's not really a secret camshaft. I won't go into where it came from, but it was compared against initial cam. And it works like this. They dyno the engine with this cam. It made the horsepower numbers you're going to see right here. Then what they did is switch cams to the cam that's in this now and picked up close to 30 horsepower just with a cam change. 
So these are the specs for the cam. You'll see it there. Guys are dying to know about it. It's not a secret like Brent said. If you want a camshaft, talk with him and he can hook you up. So let's get this 354 cubic inch Screaming Cleveland on the run stand. Make sure it runs on any issues. We'll get it to the dyno. And I'm hoping I can make more than 615 horsepower at eight grand. I bet you it will. That intake and carb. Let's put some guesses out there. I'm going to tell you it's going to make, I'm going to put a guess of 640. Make your guesses. We'll see what it does. So don't forget, guys. Drag Boss Garage. We're always seeing and learning something new.